By far the all-time uh, most popular guy movie ever made, starred Russell Crowe, Gladiator. The best moment in the movie took place in the Roman Colosseum. When the gladiator takes on the whole Roman system and with the emperor in the stands, uh, almost single-handedly on the dirty floor of the Colosseum, he whips all the trickery of the Romans and the stadium, the Colosseum is cheering gladiator and the emperor gets out of the stands and walks down on the dirty Colosseum floor and he wants to get eye contact with the gladiator and he turns away and he the emperor says what's your name and he just walks and without being given any other option, he turns and faces the emperor and says these words. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix legions, loyal servant to the true emperor Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Oh. <laughs> and every ounce of testosterone just rises to all new levels. And every guy goes, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now there's something inside everyone that wants to be able to emphatically, clearly, accurately say who they are. They want to be able to make an identity statement. Here's who I am. You want my name? I'll give you more than my name. I'll tell you really who I am and what I stand for. And that's what happened. But the amazing thing in the movie, as only movies can kind of bring this across, is there is the most well-known person in Rome, the emperor, and the least known, the gladiator. And of all things, at this high moment, there is the least known who knows who he is, standing next to the emperor who's the best known and doesn't know who he is. It's the theme of the movie. And I ask you this morning, do you know who you are? If you are a believer, in Christ. You, my friend, are in Christ. And if you don't know yourself in Christ, you don't know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you can't be yourself. And if you can't be yourself, you can't live. Now, if I were to ask you, how many of us want to live of course we want to live. We want to live as we were meant to be. The only way to really live is to know who you are. And the only way to know who you are is to know who you are in Christ. Amen? Amen. So welcome to our new sermon series, Identity, Discovering Who I Am in Christ. And we begin with this incredible scripture. And I'm going to do my best, by the grace of God, to put this scripture in us. And I want us to read it together. Would you please? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. One more time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, I want to ask you, how many of you are born again? Okay, so you are in Christ. Now, what's it say? 
If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. There's a whole new thing that you have become. You are now a new creation. Whether you feel like it, whether you think you are or not, that has happened. You are a new creation. Now listen, it goes on and it says, the old has passed away. And we're going to look at what that means. The old has passed away. But then we come to this incredible word. It's the word that we can't miss. It's the only command in the verse. Behold. Behold. Now, behold has become one of my all-time favorite words in the Bible. Behold. Whenever I find a behold in the Bible, I circle it, and I'm going to tell you why. I circle that word. It's the word that is so often the missed word, but it's the operative word. Every time God says, behold, he's giving you a grace or an empowerment or an activation to be able to see something now that you could not have seen before he said, behold. If you already saw it, he wouldn't say, behold. He's saying, behold, because Without him activating your ability to see it, you would never see it. You'd miss it. And what I'm telling us this morning is so many of us have missed the glorious reality of being in Christ. And I'm telling you, this whole series is going to be an activation. It's going to be a reorientation. And it's not just pep talks. These are reality checks. This isn't for those who are in Christ and do a great job being in Christ. You, after 25 years, will become a new creation. That's not what it says. If anyone is in Christ, the moment. And look at anyone. This is a... This is... And all inclusive. Our God is an equal opportunity Savior. Whosoever will may come, and anyone, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of their political uh, or orientation, regardless of their age, regardless of their birthplace, regardless of uh, the uh, religious orientation of their birthplace, whether Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, agnostic, church-going, non-church-going, it doesn't matter. If anyone, regardless of your degrees, your education, your intellect, regardless of your titles, autism, ADD, we've got so many titles, regardless, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, they are now a new creation. An equal opportunity savior, that's what I'm talking about. Nobody's got a leg up on anybody else. Went to Bible college, didn't go to Bible college. Read the Bible, don't read the Bible. Pray, don't pray. Tithe, don't tithe. Well, regardless, if anyone, you in Christ are a new creation. That little caterpillar has sprouted wings and you can fly. A new creation. But then it says, old things have passed away. 
Now, to better understand what those old things are, we want to understand what it means to pass away. To pass away means to be overlooked, unseen by neglect. It's not that they're not there in the history books or the archives or in yesterday's existence, but they no longer apply today. So what no longer applies to us, our value system, our orientation, a lot of the titles that we've worn, they no longer apply. We're now in Christ. That trumps everything. And so a lot of what was doesn't apply anymore because now we are in Christ. And over the next five or six Sundays, we're going to unpack all that we get because we're in Christ. Now it says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So before you were in Christ, there was condemnation. But now that you're in Christ, no condemnation. That's incredible. But that's only one. There are actually 107 times the New Testament says, in Christ. Your note says 106 times. You can cross that out. It's 107. I found another one after those notes were printed. And then if you add all the in him, like in him we move, live and move and have our being. That's a great one. So if we add the in hymns, we're dealing with more than 250 times the New Testament tells us that we are in Christ. 250 times. And we're going to look at all that this means. And then we come to this word. We are a new creation. The old things have passed away. And then the word, behold. Behold. I want to show you something. Wake up. No more sleeping. I don't ever want you to miss this again. Behold, the new has come. And what I want to tell you is inside of you, there's a whole new thing. There's a new person that lives in there when you come to Christ. And that new person that lives in you has new desires. He has a new value system. You have a new identity. And in Christ, that new person that you're becoming is the best version of yourself. And the coolest thing is, it was through no effort of your own. Now really, that shouldn't be that tough to believe because when you were born, it was through no effort of your own. When you were conceived, you didn't have anything to do with it. When you were born again, it was a work of God's grace. So when you came into the world the first time, and your first birth, you didn't have anything to do with it, and your rebirth, in a sense, you didn't have anything to do with it. It was God's work. And now that new person in you, through no effort of your own, is a new creation. And God wants you to see it Behold. Now, <clears throat> I just want to look at a couple other beholds so, to underscore this one. A few verses later, in the next chapter of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. And how often I have quoted that verse while talking to a neighbor about Christ. And I'll quote that scripture because I want the light to go on for them while I'm talking with them. I don't want them to wait till I leave for the light. To, so I say, behold, today is the day of salvation. If you haven't been using that one, Richard, use that one. Amen. But it's that, it's that behold. 
You know, people can hear and hear and hear about salvation, but then all of a sudden the light goes on and they can say, I believe. That's what we want to lead people to. That's why that scripture is there. Or what about this one? You know, <clears throat> before Jesus ascended, after he was crucified and buried and rose from the dead, he met with his disciples on a mountain and he said to them, all authority has been given to me. Go in all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And then, lo, I am with you always. Now, nobody says lo anymore. It's this word, behold. It's the same word. What he's saying is, you, you got the fact that I've got all authority. You got the fact that I'm sending you to go make disciples of all nations. But what you might miss is even though I'm about to send into heaven and sit down at the right hand of the Father, I, want, I don't want you to miss, lo, behold, I'm giving you an empowerment here, an activation so you can see this and never forget it. I'm with you always. How many of you know the reality that God is with you always? Now, that's an empowerment. That's an activation. Or what about this one from Revelation 3.20? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I'll come in and have fellowship with them. How many of you have ever heard that verse? How many of you have ever experienced the reality of that verse? Oh, praise God. But Jesus can be standing there for a long time knocking. But until he says, behold, you might not even be aware of it. So what is behold? It's a word of activation. Or in Revelation 21, behold, I make all things new. Or the last behold of the Bible. It's in Revelation 22, behold, I am coming soon. I'm coming quickly. You see, Jesus always wants us to see that he's in the ready posture to return, that he could come here back at a moment's notice. He wants us to live beholding his return. Amen? What I'm here to tell you is in the scriptures, there's all these uses of this word behold. In fact, there's 213 of them. Every time I come to one, I circle it because I want an activation to take place. Well, today we come to one. It's behold, the new has come. I want you to see the new. Don't miss it. Don't live in ignorance. Your identity is in Christ. Your future is in Christ. Your redemption is in Christ. Your authority is in Christ. Your freedom is in Christ. Your confidence, your courage, your calling, your fulfillment, it's all in Christ. As a follower of Christ, as a believer in Christ, you will never see yourself until you see yourself in Christ. If you don't see yourself, you're not going to know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you can't be yourself. And if you can't be yourself, you can't live. God wants you to live. The key to living life as God intends us to live is to see ourselves in Christ. We're not perfect, but we're in Christ. Raise your finger. Say this. Point at, point at your chest. I'm not perfect, but I'm in Christ. Feels good, right? Point to the person next to you. I'm not perfect, but I'm in Christ. That's good, right? It's kind of like, be patient with me. 
cut me a little slack. We're going to make it. I'm not perfect, but I'm in Christ. I'm in process. The old things are passing away. What you did yesterday is not as important as who you are in Christ. You want to grow up. You want to mature. It's seeing who you are in Christ and moving in that direction. He is our future. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next week, we're coming to the book of Ephesians. I'd encourage you to read the first page of Ephesians. Circle every in him. I found 15. See if you can beat me. Little healthy competition. Finish the book. See where you find the last in him. I'll just give you a clue. It's in chapter 6. The last chapter has a whopper. Then we're going from Ephesians, we're going to Colossians, and then to Philippians. Then we're going to mop up a few other places. I'm so excited. Behold, the new has come. Amen? Amen? You are in Christ a new creation. A few years ago, we started saying, oh, that's so yesterday. That's so last year. Well, who we were before we knew Christ is so yesterday. It's just... The, the news is who we are in Christ. We are a new creation. The old, the things we've done that we're not proud of, those are passing. They're passing away. The new, behold, the new is coming in Christ. Let's stand together. I want to bow together in prayer and as we look to the Lord for a moment before we sing, I just want to call us to our identity in Christ. Would you pray this prayer out loud with me? Father God, in Jesus' name, I receive my new identity. my new motivation, my new orientation, my new disposition. In Christ, I am called. In Christ, I am confident. In Christ, I am courageous. And in Christ, in Christ. I am fulfilled. I am fulfilled. Hallelujah. Father, what a promise. Put it in our hearts. Use it to awaken us to who we are in Christ. Amen.